Welcome r slash interglimperance. EA claims adult child has to obey her, because it's the law. Another post about a parent volunteering their adult child reminded me of this. It happened to my cousin, but I was there for the majority of the story. I remember it, so clearly for a couple of reasons, in addition to just having a good memory. It was the first trip after my father had died and it was, sadly, the last trip I took with my mother. She died less than a year later. TL slash DR at the bottom. My aunt was always playing the big shot of solving people's problems, but using my cousin as the actual person to take on the problem, always for free. If someone insisted on paying, EA kept the money. Need a babysitter? A ride? House cleaned? Yard mode. Errands run. Oh, my daughter can't do it. As far as my aunt was concerned, the only reason Emily existed was to cater to her. Emily was her ultimate trophy. EA was entitled long before it became a huge thing. Cast. EA entitled Aunt Emily Cousin Mike Emily's Boyfriend Me Axa PO1 Police Officer 1 PO2 Police Officer 2 Judge Judge My Aunt has always been entitled. It's her personality type. My mother couldn't stand her little sister, so we tried to avoid her, while still maintaining contact with her husband and child. My uncle, their brother, lived further south in the state, so we always tried to avoid EA knowing when we were visiting. On this trip, I was staying with my cousin for a couple of weeks in the summer and we were going to do the tourist things. EA thought that the university not being in session meant that cousin was slave labor. One day Emily decided that enough was enough. She was supposed to run errands for a friend of EA and had told her mother she had plans. Her mother, as usual, acted as though Emily had agreed and expected her to comply. Emily just didn't run the errand for the friend as demanded. It was that simple. My mother and I had arrived about 10 minutes before the phone rang. EA called and though this was back during landlines, she was screaming so loudly that both my mother and I could hear both sides clearly. EA, how dare you embarrass me with my friends. You call Mrs. Noname and apologize immediately. You are grounded for a month and you may not drive the car at all. Now you make that call and go. Run those errands now. If anyone can explain how she was supposed to do this without using the car, I'd like to know. Emily, mom, I'm 22. I do not live in your house. You do not pay my bills. And you do not own my car. Run the errands yourself. I have plans. My mom was a little nervous leaving us at that point, it's a mom thing, and she has met her sister thing, even though we were both fine. She left, just after meeting Emila's boyfriend. We left and went to a water park and a few other things. We got back to the house, and were talking about where to have dinner. Mom insisted on paying for us to go someplace really nice for dinner that night. We get back, and Emila's car is gone. She called and asked where it was. Emily, mom, do you have my car? EA, yes, I do. Your father brought me over, so I could check and see if you had obeyed me. I told you that you were grounded and you were not there when I arrived. I'm keeping the car for a month, but I'm going to let Mrs. Noname borrow it because you have been so horrible to her. Emily, mom, that's stealing. I want my car back now or I'm going to report it stolen. No, Mrs. Noname can't drive my car. EA, I'm your mother. What I say goes, Missy, you need to learn some respect and to get it through your head that I'm in charge and you are the child. You don't own anything, it's mine because I'm your mother. The police will likely arrest you for wasting their time. Emily hangs up and looks at me. She is so angry she is crying in rage. Emily, Axa, if I call the police she's going to know you are here. Me, I can live with that. That fallout is a whole other story. She picks up the phone and calls the police. Tells them the car has been taken without her permission and where it is. Mike drives us over there. We do not want to miss the show. PO1 knocks on the door. EA answers. EA, hello, officers. Do you need something? PO1, ma'am, the vehicle in the drive matches the description and location of a vehicle reported stolen. EA, it's my car. I took it from my daughter, because she is grounded from using it for being disobedient and disrespectful. PO2, I see, may we have a word with her, please? EA, looking very smug, she doesn't live here. PO1, 
who had noticed us across the street, you three. Come over here please. PO1. Did one of you call us? Emily. I did. It's my car officer. My mother seems to think that she has control over it in me. EA. It's my car. I'm your mother and you have to obey me. It's the law. Tell her officers. PO2. Actually, ma'am, there is no such law. Your daughter is an adult. EA. There most certainly is such a law. I'm going to report you to your chief for not knowing it. I may even sue. PO1. To cousin. May I see the car registration and your license please? Emily hands them to him. PO1. Ma'am. This car is registered in the name of your daughter and only your daughter. It's her car and you have no right to drive it. EA looks at the registration the officer is showing her and then snatches Emily's license from him and slams the door. The police officers look at each other for a moment and then shrug and ring the bell again. EA answers it, looking very smug. PO1, ma'am, I'm going to need you to return the license. Now, EA hands him the license that she has cut into several pieces. EA, now she can't drive because she doesn't have a license. She looks at Emily, as though she just scored some odd victory, then she finally notices me. EA, Axa, what are you doing here? Me, just trying to have a nice visit with my cousin, she has hated me for years. EA, you need to leave, I didn't give you permission to visit. Where is your mother? Me, I don't need your permission. My mother is not here, I can travel without her. PO1, ma'am, you are under arrest for destruction of government property. Apparently cutting up a valid license is a felony in some places. Who knew? And grand theft of this car. EA, you can't arrest me. I'm her mother. I have rights. PO2, yes, you do. He then reads them to her. The officer explains to us that until she destroyed the license he had been willing to issue an appearance ticket. Then instead of being arrested she would just have had to appear in front of the judge and get a fine. This was a much bigger deal. Emily ran into the house to tell her father what had happened. We all chatted for a little bit until the phone rang. It was EA telling him to call their attorney. We all left. I drove the car back to Emily's and took her to get a license replaced the next morning. The attorney called by my uncle apparently didn't know my aunt and he showed up at the first hearing, a week later, to try and get it dismissed. It looked to be going her way at first. EA attorney, you honor, this is a family matter. It's simply a case of a mother disciplining her child and the child calling the police because her mother grounded her from using the car. Judge, so she got mad and called the police and she, not knowing that it was a crime to destroy the license, did so. EA attorney, yes, your honor, that's pretty much it. Judge, prosecutor, do you have nothing better to do today? Prosecutor, no, your honor, I don't. I consider it rather important. When a 22 year old woman has her car stolen, it doesn't matter who stole it. She has just as much of a right to justice as someone who has their car stolen by a stranger. Judge, 22, the victim is 22. Prosecutor, yes, your honor. The victim is a 22-year-old woman who is the sole owner of the vehicle in question. Her mother became enraged at her daughter. She then went to her daughter's home, stole her car and later destroyed her license. EA attorney, your honor, I was not aware of the age or loving situation of the victim. I was under the impression that the child was a minor who resides with her parents. EA was sitting there still looking smug. Her attorney was sweating bullets. Judge, EA, do you realize that these are very serious charges and if convicted you face up to 8 years in prison? EA, for what? I have the right to discipline my child as I see fit. She disobeyed me. She will think twice before doing it again. Judge, no, you don't. You have the right to discipline your child within the confines of the law. You have stepped outside of that parameter. You stole your daughter's car. EA, I'm her mother, it's my right. It isn't really theft, because she is my child and her property belongs to me, by law. Judge, where did you get your law degree? EA, I don't have one. Judge, then let me be the first to explain to you that your child is a legal adult. Period. You have no right to anything of hers without her express consent. Period. You may not take her car without her permission. Period. 
you may not enter her home without her permission. Period. Do you understand that? EA, you don't know what you are talking about. I'm her mother. That gives me the right. I'm in charge. Judge, no, ma'am, I'm in charge. This case will be held over for trial. I went home a week later. EA eventually took a plea deal where she had two years probation and had to take parenting classes. The parenting classes were Mike's idea and the prosecutor thought it was great. We laughed hysterically over that because my cousin is an only child, lol. Emily and Mike married a year later and moved the hell away from there. This took place about 30 years ago. EA maintained for the rest of her life that the judges, there were five or different status hearings, didn't know what the hell they were doing, and she was right. TL slash DR. Entitled aunt thinks she can punish adult child by taking her car. The police and the judge disagree with her. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, hit like. If you would like to see more, feel free to subscribe.